nesting behaviors of bluebirds. This is a male eastern bluebird. And if you look at the map, you can see where you can find this bird in the United States. As I mentioned in the previous slide, bluebirds are native to the United States, which means that you can't find them in other countries like in Europe or in Australia. You're only going to find them in the United States. They belong to the thrush family, which means that they are related to robins. Just like robin babies, which have speckles on their chest, so do bluebird babies have speckles on their chest. That's how you can tell an adult from a baby. They weigh about 1.2 ounces, which is the same weight as a quarter. So if you put a quarter in your hand and you felt it, that's how much an adult bluebird weighs. They're about seven inches in length from the tip of their head to the tip of their tail, and they can live six to 10 years in the wild, although the first year of life is the most dangerous for fledglings, so the population of fledglings goes down. A bluebird mom and dad would like to make their nest in this tree that has a hole in it that a woodpecker made the hole. Bluebirds cannot make the hole the way a woodpecker can. Their beaks don't allow it. So they have to find dead trees that have old woodpecker holes in it. And most people cut down dead trees on their property. So the supply of dead trees that have woodpecker holes in them is very limited. So this is what they would really like to have. However, If they can't find a dead tree, they'll be very happy to have one of these. This is called a nest box. A nest box serves the purpose of a dead tree for a bluebird to raise its family. Some people call these bird houses. That's kind of not really accurate because the only pur purpose for having a nest box is for the mom and dad to have their babies and to take care of their babies until their babies can be independent. After that, they fly out of the hole and they never go back into the nest box again until they're all grown up and they want to make babies of their own. This slide shows a bird bath with, with a bluebird taking a bath right after after the winter the spring comes they haven't had a bath since the weather got really cold and so they take a bath if you click on the picture you will see that it is video on the right hand picture there's a female and a male at my bird bath the female is the one on the right and the one on the left is the male birds need to have fresh water in their bird bath I must say that my bird bath in this picture needs to be cleaned, which should be done every few days in the summertime and springtime. In the springtime, a male will have already chosen a box and he'll sit on the roof of it and he will sing and sing and sing again, hoping that a female is nearby and that she'll fly down and check out the box that he chose. He sings and he patiently waits. And then you can see a female sitting on top of this box. If she decides that she likes the box, then that means that she will stay in that box, take care of eggs, raise her babies, and then leave when they are all finished. This is a lot of work, so she's going to check this box out to make sure that it has enough ventilation so that in the summertime, if it gets hot outside, that the babies inside the box will be, will be protected. There's enough air flow to keep them cool. She also wants to make sure 
that the box is safe, that there's not leaks in it, or that there's an old nest left from last year inside the box. All of those things would make her fly away and find another box that she would like better, and maybe even another male. If you see the female go into the box, then shortly after that, you're going to see some courtship behaviors. Going into the box tells the male that she really likes that box and wants to have her babies there because it's safe and clean. After she's come out of the box, you're going to see some courtship behaviors. All winter long, the bluebirds that fly around my house and at my feeder, the male always eats first and the female eats second. But in the springtime, after courtship behaviors have started, he will feed her food first and then he will eat last. Wing flapping is another bonding behavior, courtship behavior. You can see the male bluebird on top of the box and he's kind of wing waving. Um, he also does a lot of chirping during this, this time. Another behavior that he will do is something that I call flying acrobatics. He's kind of hovering like a hummingbird does. Bluebirds eat in insects, so he has to be able to fly very well. And he's kind of showing off to the female, look, I'm really good at flying, so therefore I'm going to be a very good provider for you as well as my babies. After all the bonding behaviors have happened, nest building begins. And if you look really carefully at the male, he has one little strand of a pine needle or a piece of dry grass in his mouth. The female builds most of the nest. He provides just a little bit. As I mentioned, only the female builds the nest. He'll bring some materials to the nesting box, but very little work is done. He stands by, watches from a roost somewhere, a branch, and then he will um, encourage her to continue building the nest. I have noticed from having a camera in a box that the males go into the nesting box and will pull things out of the nest that they don't want in there, like leaves or other pieces of debris. So you can see the males coming out. He has a little bit of nesting material in his mouth. It's something that he doesn't want inside the nest. This is day one of a nest. If you look at the bottom of the box, you'll see some pieces of pine needle. You might find a couple pieces of dried grass. This is what we call a claim straw or straws. And what it means is that this box is taken. The bluebirds have decided that they want to build their nest there. So if another bird comes by and looks in there and sees some pine needles or dry grass, that bird know, knows that this box has been claimed. Not that that always works. Sometimes more aggressive birds will continue to build, will build a nest right on top. But it's the bluebird's way of showing that ownership of this box. It's like putting a sold sign on your house. This is day three of the same nest box, and you can see there's quite a lot of building going on here and I want to point out and make you think how does a bird bring nesting material to the nest site? Well if you think about it they can't use their feet because when they land they have to land on their feet so the only other way that they can bring nesting material to the site is using their beak. Imagine if you couldn't use your hands you couldn't use your feet, and you had to only use your mouth to bring nesting material, it's a lot of work to build a nest. 
Here's day four of the nest. And again, you can tell it's a lot of hard work. This is day seven. This is a completed nest. You'll notice that it's made of pine needles in this example, but sometimes they'll use soft grass to line the inside cup of the nest for where the babies and the eggs will be. That's the kind of finishing touch that the female puts inside of her nest before she lays her eggs. The female is the one who incubates the eggs. She has a patch on her belly that's called a brooding patch and it's extra fat on her belly that keeps the babies warm, the eggs warm, while she's either incubating or trying to keep them warm after they have been laid. Only Incubation lasts 13 to 16 days. I have found around, it all depends on the weather. If it's cold outside, it might take a little longer. If it's very warm, like in the summertime, it would be a shorter amount of time. But I find usually 14 days is about the amount that I see in our area. I'm often asked, how long does it take from the first claim straw till the time the babies leave the nest, which is called fledging. And if it takes seven days to make a nest, and if there are six eggs, it's gonna be six days to lay those eggs, and then 14 days to incubate them, approximately. And after they hatch, it takes 20 more days for them to be able to leave the nest, a total of 47 days. I forgot to mention on the last slide that bluebirds can lay three clutches of eggs in a season per year. Here's a picture of babies that have just hatched. And as I said earlier, they will hatch within a day or two of each other. The first picture on the left, you can see two babies have just hatched and then there's an egg that looks like it has a little hole in it. What a baby does is while it's inside the egg and it's about to hatch, it throws its head upward. On the end of its beak is something called an egg tooth. That egg tooth is a little sharp piece on its beak. And as it throws its head up, it pierces the inside of the shell and what the baby does on the inside is keeps making like little perforations, little holes, all in a circle around the upper part of the egg. And eventually, he will be able to cut right through that eggshell. The picture on the right shows newborn babies. Notice that their eyes are closed. Notice that they don't have any feathers. They have a couple of little tufts of um, feather, but that might be three feathers on their entire body. This is hatch day for these little babies, and there are actually five. There are three, well, three babies basically that you can see, and two eggs that haven't hatched yet. The baby that's fighting for survival is, it's a lot of work to make those perforation um, around the, the perforation around the eggshell. So he rests a little bit, he pushes, he rests, and he pushes. Sometimes the other brothers and sisters will put their egg on, eggs right on top, their heads right on top of the eggshell, causing the baby to fight even more. You'll notice also that the baby is wet. The feathers, when they come, when they first get out of the shell, are, are moist because of the moisture that was still being held inside of the eggshell. This slide shows on the left babies that are pretty new. They might be a day old. And then the ones on the right, you'll notice how much they have grown in just five days. Notice on the right they have pin feathers coming in. On the left hand side, they kind of look like little blobs. They don't even have any feathers to keep themselves warm. 
but on the right, the feathers are coming in and they're starting to look a lot more like birds. This shows what the baby blue birds look like at two weeks old. You'll notice that they have pin feathers and they have dander all over them. The dander that they have on them is actually the pin feather when it flakes off. It's kind of like a feather in a straw tube. And when the outside part of the straw tube starts to flake off, that's why you see the little white spots there. Um, this is an example of three week old birds. They look like bluebirds. And if a lot of times I'm asked whether this is a female baby or a male baby, and you really don't know for sure. But in this picture, if you look at the one that is the second one in, you'll notice that his tail feathers are much bluer than the one that's to in front of him. And so that's probably the one with blue is probably going to be the male. The one closer is probably going to be a female. The whole time that these babies have been growing, the parents have been taking care of them, which is a very hard job, and you'll see what effect it has on them. Both mom and dad feed, and they feed from sunrise until sunset. As the length of light in the summertime, as we approach summertime, the length of the daylight extends. So the sun comes up at maybe six in the morning and it no longer sets at four or five o'clock in the afternoon, as you know. It's now a longer day of light. So that means that mom and dad have to keep feeding longer each day. So it's a lot of work. And each one of those mouths gets fed every 15 minutes. That is a lot of work. The nest has to remain clean because we don't want bacteria near our babies. So waste is constantly removed by the parents. In this picture, you can see a parent coming out and what he's doing, or she's doing, is she's carrying, notice where the little arrow is, she's carrying a fecal sac. A fecal sac happens, what happens is the mom or the dad feeds the, the, a mouth, the baby turns around and releases its waste in a little clear sac, which we call a fecal sac. It's kind of like a diaper. They their waist is encased in this sack and then the parent flies it far away from the nesting site and they do that so that predators don't know that babies are inside that nesting box it would be really easy to kind of just like dump it outside at the at the bottom of the nest but they want to make sure that the babies are protected and predators don't know that those babies are in there When the babies are pretty much grown, the parents stop going into the nest box to feed them. And you can tell this is a baby because, just like baby robins, their chest, their chest is speckled, just like a baby robin's is. So he's poking his head out because his mom and dad are not going to come into the nest anymore to feed them and clean up after them. So he's looking around and saying, where's my mom and dad? I want some food. So he leans out of the hole. He continues to leave, lean out. This is a picture of a male doing what I call like a drive-by uh, feeding because he's not going to go in. He wants to encourage his babies to come out now that they have feathers and they can fly, but the babies don't know they can fly yet. They fall out, and if you look closely, this, is, this bird has just flown the coop. He looks like a little torpedo. Notice he doesn't 
use his wings yet because he doesn't know what they're there for. He's never been out of that four by four square box. And his brothers, if you look at the hole, you still can see other babies inside of that nesting box. This is the second shot in the, in the sequence of those two pictures. The first one you saw, he falls out. This is the second one. This is when he realizes he has something on his sides that will help him so he doesn't crash land. This is the first time this baby has ever spread his wings to fly. Watch the baby in this hole because you're going to see him fledge. His dad is on the roof and he's squawking up a storm because he's encouraging his baby to leave the nest. This slide shows the bird fledging. Usually the baby will fly a short distance either to a low tree branch, a shrub, or to the ground, which is kind of dangerous. Mom and Dad will give uh, the baby a tasty treat, sometimes a grasshopper, to say, hey, that was a great job that you just did. And then the parents are going to go back to the box to encourage the others. If you hear chattering, like you did in the video, at your nesting box, keep watching because after one bird fledges, the next one is going to poke his head out and say, hey, where'd he go? I want to go too and they copy each other until every one of them has left the nest. After the babies have left the nest, the dad takes over and starts to feed the babies. Sometimes the mom feeds too, but one thing she's probably going to do, if it's early in the season, is she's going to start to build a new nest. This is where you come in. You want to make sure that the nest box is empty. You want to remove the old nest and you want to discard it and then she will start to build a brand new nest in your nesting box. So you'll get to watch everything all over again. So the male is going to be feeding, the female is going to start to build that na new nest and then start to lay eggs and do the whole process all over again. And as I mentioned earlier, she can do this up to three times in a season, depending on the weather and the temperature. Sometimes babies continue to want to be fed, and you can see this baby is kind of yelling, Dad, are you listening? I want food. Dad? This picture really sums up how difficult it is to be a parent. Notice the dad on the right. His feathers are all worn out and shabby looking, but the baby on the left, his feathers glisten are nice and sleek. The fledglings will remain with the dad or the parents for about three weeks. And after that, you'll probably see them coming to your feeder all by themselves because they know where to find food. If there's a second clutch of eggs, this is just about the time that they're going to be hatching. In this picture, you're going to see a juvenile. It's like teenage years for people. The molting is happening. To molt means a feather falls out and a new one comes in. Kind of like when you were a baby, you lost your baby teeth one at a time. You didn't lose them all at one time. It was one tooth came, fell out and another one came in and it took some time in between. It's the same thing with, um, with birds. They lose a feather at a time so that they have other feathers to keep them warm. As I'm sure you've learned in your science class this year, every living organism needs to have food, water, and shelter. If you provide those for bluebirds, they do not have to leave. But they do need to have food, and they need a source of water. 
water that is in liquid form, not solid form, because they can't drink ice. So I have a heater in my bird bath that is controlled to be about 44 degrees in the wintertime. So the water in the bird bath never freezes and they're able to drink it. They get their protection by living in trees that I have in my backyard and berries from food for food that I have provided in my backyard as well. So I have birds, all bluebirds in my backyard all year long. Now that you know all about bluebirds, I included this slide about the Bluebird Society of Pennsylvania only because I want you to look at the bottom where it says www.bsp.org. Um, that's a great resource if you have any questions about bluebirds. Um, or even some other songbirds are mentioned in that. So it's a source for you to find information if you do put a bluebird box up.